Morning folks, let's try this again. So, yesterday, the voiceover was a complete and utter disaster. For some reason, it ended up being 31 minutes long in a 20 minute video. And that makes no sense. Now, on the other hand, how do I put it? Alright, so a lot of people ask me in the clan, right, guy, how do you do the voiceovers? All right, so there's two methods of doing the voiceovers. Uh, one is through Filmora, uh, which is a video editing software I use. I don't pay thousands and thousands for Adobe because their channel isn't ready to be monetized or anything, uh, so I go cheap. And Filmora has a method where you can actually uh, record voiceovers. Second way is quite a bit more difficult. I have to play back through VLC while uh, muting it and then I record it through Audacity. Usually the voiceover quality is a little bit better with Audacity. Then I've got to take that file, export it, import it into Filmora and match it up on the timeline, etc. And I do these voiceovers early in the morning before my day starts. My I actually, I, well, I have a day job. I work for a corporate bank. My wife works for a cosmetics company. We share an office with COVID. Both of us are working from home for the foreseeable future. So early in the morning is about the only quiet time I have. So I hope that clears up. So yesterday there was no video due to the entire mess. And I like to have a, a voiceover or at least a story go along with a video. So here I am. I'm playing with uh, Norg and Louise. Uh, and I'm playing my Azuma. And there are people may ask, why did you pick the Azuma? Now, I picked the Azuma uh, because I was busy with the directive we, uh, for the anchorage where you need 17 and a half million potential damage at you. And everybody likes shooting at the Azuma. Like, for example, this Georgia that I'm about to shoot at. He catches me slightly, slightly broadside just before I can get my angle 100% oh this is gonna hurt ow oh, hits me one on the stern and takes about 16k away ouch now the Azuma she is essentially a citadel from that little antenna on the stern right up to the little antenna on the bow people that tell you there oh the citadel is never get the citadel that fucking big this thing is a floating citadel, and it's big. But I actually enjoy the Azuma. My highest damage cruiser game has been with the Azuma of all things. And what makes the Azuma great, once you get her into a, a good position, is the guns. These guns are amazing, and the HE on the Azuma is amazing. Yoshino at tier 10, obviously, bigger brother to the Azuma. Has is Izuma, Azuma, not Izumo, <laughs> Azuma. Bigger brother has torpedoes, and the AP on the Yoshino is a bit better. Anyway, in this match, we got two total potatoes. So, notice in the A line on A6, our Kaga completely abandoning the one side, and in the C line at C5, we've got an Izumo. And that Izumo is also completely and utterly abandoning its flank. With the Izumo abandoning that flank, it left the Colorado alone at sea cap, which is going to really bite us in the arse. But I've learned with all the replays I've featured lately, and a lot of them being losses, you cannot make up for potato players. Uh, you, you just cannot. You know, I've given up on actually worrying about my win rate. I just play the game for fun now. Um, loss after loss after loss because of potatoes. And they don't understand what they are doing wrong. So, as I'm firing at this Iowa, you'll see him he make some quite basic mistakes as well. So, why I like moving here, as I set a single fire on the Iowa, and look at what he does. 
the damage controls it immediately. Now I've got about a 16 second reload here, so... Ooh, my climate Norg is Pomeran, takes up the Duke of York. And why I like this area in the map, and why we moved from B to A, is doing exactly what Louise Norg is doing. You can shoot into B and into A. Uh, Norg and his Pomeran is taking B cap while being able to cover A. Uh, Louise and himself, Sawyers is taking A and the two people can cover each other. Now that poor Colorado that was left alone on the C flank, he's been taken out. They've captured C. And we're already a ship down as well. So this I was probably getting slightly pissed at me because I'm actually backing up. I've got a brilliant angle on him. And if you angle this Zuma right like this, uh, she gets pretty tanky. Now I remember that fire that he put out. Well, this is a perma fire. Dear battleship players, don't put out a single fire, especially when you're being HE spammed. We now got a Katakazi shooting HE at him as well, and he's going to burn. So he's decided this is a uh, very shit idea to remain around here, and he is now turning out. Now, probably could have swapped to AP, but. The AP on the Azuma really is actually quite shit, so I just spam HE. Oh, coffee is very important. That Zumo actually does something decent, shoots an archery. Norgan the Pomeran has managed to capture B for us, so we're not using too many cap points. And Iowa is shooting at me with its rear turret while it is border surfing. And instead of hunting the destroyers, our CV the Kaga is damage farming. Because his planes are incoming on that Iowa. And yeah, this this CV is totally clueless. And you'll see why in a bit. So unfortunately Dork paid the price for that pushing to be. He got taken out by Sean Horst. Good job, the Nork. We needed that cap point. Colorado takes out that Iowa, and he paid the price for border surfing. So, what was the mistake he made? I would have packed up, put my nose into everybody, and slowly backed up. He tried to turn around. He got stuck on a border. Pure panic. Now, my friend Louise in the soft Soyuz, he is trying to take A here. We're losing B to that exact Sean horse that took out Norg and his Pomeran. And Norg is typing, CV, can you focus the Sean horse in B? He's alone. And the reason for that is we need the reset because otherwise it's going to cap. So I'm on Discord. I talked to Norg and I said to him, listen, let me launch a spotter plane. Maybe, just maybe I can get a shell to touch him. Single good hit on him will reset the cap. Launch my spotter plane, and there we go. Shonos turns out, but I managed to get one hit on him, and I get a defended ribbon. Alright. So we've defended B for a little bit while that Shonos turns out, but now they've got the DD coming in. And look at what our Gaga is doing. He's sending these torpedo bombers all down the one line. Now, I don't know about you, but, but oh, it doesn't make sense. Why, why wouldn't he send them directly over to B to defend the cap? Yeah, anyway. Uh, I, I don't know. It's too early in the morning for that. So there's like Akatsuki and a Georgia. And this is a point where the Georgia's side armor is actually pretty weak. And I decide, you know what, let's let's throw some AP at this. Now we've got a Katakazi trying to shotgun a Georgia with torpedoes. Now there's black smoke blowing from that Georgia's stacks, so that means only one thing. He is running his speed boost. Katakazi takes out there a Katsuki, which is good. We get a bunch of overpins. 
the torpedo is hit, but it doesn't kill the Georgia. Georgia, especially the way I set it up, is amazing. Because it has secondaries, and that secondaries kills the Kitakaze. And that Kitakaze just threw away his ship right there. That was a bad, bad move. Luckily, the Georgia comes out low HP. He's shooting at my friend in the soft series. And I was saying on Discord, leave my friend alone. So, first kill of the match, number 78,000 damage. We are unfortunately losing B. I don't have shots on the uh, DD capping it now. And you would think that Akaga would do something about it. But he is not. So now the biggest problem is we don't have a cap. We don't have a single cap. So the Surrey here and kudos to the player there, uh, something driver. He is trying to cap. Problem is the Surrey is squishy and it's tier seven. And that means anything that sees him is going to focus him. Some spotted. There's a Z46 out here as well. They've still got two DDs. We have none because our DD threw uh, his life away against a fucking secondary build, Georgia. But the Scharnhorst is low. I can't see the DD. I can see the Scharnhorst shells out. And unfortunately, I slip out of the cap here. Yeah, <laughs> I slip out. <laughs> see what I did there? First shells miss because he keeps turning. Luckily, Azuma has got a great reload. AP out, broadside Sean Horst. Hitting the brakes. Second kill of the match. So I'm saying to Norkia, but I actually really need to push. But the problem is, I also need caps. So hit the reverse. And I'm trying to get into the cap as well to help that Surrey because that Surrey is getting reset. If I can get behind this island and I can go dark for, I mean, 30 seconds, I should have the cap. That Don Squay takes out our Colorado, and we are we're equal on ships, but we're down on caps. Nor tells the Surrey to stealth up. Oh, and there's the speedy death pylons. Luckily Z46 doesn't have the range to reach me. But I'm going to turn my bow in. Just to make sure that I don't eat. And, and, and yeah, I'll say this. Azuma, for a size, is surprisingly, surprisingly maneuverable. So there's a Z46. And he's only got 9,000 hit points. And you would have hoped that our CV would have gone after that Z. Taking him out of the equation is not that difficult. Unfortunately, my friend Louise, he goes down to the Donskoy burning him. I mean, there's only so much a Subsoys can tank. It can tank a lot. But there's only so much it can take. <laughs> so we got a cap, and now we've lost Surrey, and it's five to three. And this is a problem. So there's an Akatsuki in Iowa, a Donskoy, I've got a Z46 on my side. No, I know the Donskoy sides are squishy. I mean, it's basically hardened toilet paper. So, switch to AP. I need either the Zakatsuki or the Donskoy out. And this Izumo that abandoned the side is now screaming, kill the DD. And yeah, that would be very handy to kill the DD. But look at where our cargo's bombers are going. He's not bothered with the DD, he's going for the Iowa, because it's a big slow target. Iowa isn't posing a threat to us at all. This CB player, as I get my third kill on the Donskoy, the CB player, I think, was literally one of the worst CB players I've ever seen. And I mean, I've 
I don't play CBs. I'll be very honest. I actually don't know how. Um, I need to spend some time in the training room and learn how to do it. I'll probably do it. But it's not a playstyle that appeals to me. Torpedoes are incoming, but I got my Hydro up. Uzuma manages to kill his Akatsuki. I am burning. There will be 3-3. Three, three. The problem is that Z46 that sent those torps at me. I can't go full broadside out of here until that Iowa is done. And this cargo is still focusing the Iowa. And I know this because the fucking Iowa's just got AA defense experts. <sighs> so as I wanted to get a broadside in the Iowa, the Uzuma kills it. Okay, great. We need caps. And we need to find a CV. And now, if this CV had just gone off to the Z46, this match would have been won. I mean, I've got 13 seconds until I got a bit of a heal coming up. Uh, the CV is now going to pound me like I'm Debbie and I'm visiting Dallas. It's. And I don't blame the CV at all. This is exactly what I would have done. I've got a big, big structure. Um, I dodge and weave a little bit. I've got a spot to plan because the fighter actually does nothing. Get a bit of a heal going. Seven more planes down. But I know the CV is close because I can see where the planes are landing and taking off. And there he is. He's spotted. I wanted to get into B, hopefully can B, but we don't have the points. We've got three minutes left in this game. Lexington is doing a torpedo run. And I'm try and get as much turning into the Azuma as I can. She's a bit of an agile beast. I mean she's still what was called a super cruiser or a battle cruiser. And people compare her to the Alaska, and it's not fair. Her playstyle is very different to the Alaska. Her strengths and weaknesses are very different to the Alaska. Um, what was that? <laughs> the replays are so messed up. So I'm going full tilt here. I need to kill the CV. And hopefully our CV, if it has half a brain, he can now find that Z46 on 9000 HP and just kill him. So I pop my last heal. And I find Mr. Lexington. Change to AP because he's sitting broadside to me and the AP is going to do way more damage. And this guy is launching every plane that he can at me and I really don't blame him. But look at what the fucking CV on our side is doing. He's now trying to torpedo the CV instead of finding the DD. Seriously, we had the worst CV player I've ever seen. And this is not stat shaming, it's animal fucking research. So I get three sets of elves and a dev strike on the CV. Uh, managed to get a repair party going before I burn out to one. There we go. Repair party. Then I type gotcha. He's like, yeah, what cost that? I'm still alive. Yeah. Four kills. Our time's running out. We got a minute. And now I have to turn around and look at where our CV's planes are in F6. <clears throat> that Z46 is near near us. I know this because I'm not spotted. I'm not spotted anywhere and I mean the Azuma you can see from space a concealment kind of shit I'm also using my 10 point Azuma Jelaine captain on this thing um, not my 19 point Zao captain which is actually quite a bit better and our CV as everybody types that is utterly useless nor typing that the destroyer is near A a, A, he's sending his planes up here in the J line. 
Our Kaga is literally the worst Kaga player I have ever, ever seen. So, not much you can do about this. I mean, when you have a when you have players like that, it's not much that you can do. <sighs> so yeah, time runs out, we lose, but top of the team, 137,000 damage. Uh, four kills, 24 planes shot down, captured, defended. Here we are obviously top of the team. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that the Azuma is a great ship. Changed my mind. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Take care.